Now, globally, 80% of capitals by public and corporate organizations are raised from the debt market. But in Nigeria, the opposite is the case as only 30% is raised from the debt market, 90% of which is dominated by the federal government bonds. And to change this trend, economists, analysts and thought leaders at the just concluded FMDQ OTC Securities Exchange Conference brainstormed on way out. This panel will be moderated by Mr. Kayode Sholola, who is the head global markets West Africa, Standic IBTC Bank PLC. Joining him on the panel is special advisor to the CBN Governor on Financial Markets from the Central Bank of Nigeria. Nigeria once again experiencing a debt, uh, an oil price shock. The reaction, the policy reaction to that oil price shock in some instances not necessarily being adequate to the challenges that the economy faces. We know that there have, in, on previous occasions, been great interest in, or these spurts of interest in Nigerian debt capital markets. There are times when everything seems relatively stable, interest rates can come down, conditions are right for corporate issuance, everything seems to be moving in the right direction. There is the foreign participation, the foreign investor interest as well. And then when the economy experiences a shock, it seems as though the knee-jerk reaction is to undo a lot of what might make those debt market conditions more successful. So where there had been a lot of foreign issuance, foreign currency issuance, the concern becomes how are the entities that had borrowed been able, how will they be able to access the foreign currency liquidity that they need to be able to repay their debt? Investors disappear for a while. This may or may not have something to do with the index inclusion of Nigeria and the additional interest in the country. And it takes a long while for them to return, foreign investors to return, with the demand for even higher risk premium when they eventually do. In an economy where everything is all about development, price stability is great, but as a policy fixation, um, price stability, quite frankly, is not going to develop this country. Um, a poor country's problems are not about inflation because, quite frankly, um, you're already dead, yeah? Um, a poor country's problems fundamentally are about how do I create the base for creating improved living standards for our people, and how do I create the base for creating jobs on a sustainable basis, and how do I create a fully diversified economy which is not dependent on any particular segment. And it is all of those things ultimately. It is that diversification away from this mono product that then begins to ease the pressure on foreign currency. And it's that which makes oil less and less a decimal. Oil is 14% of this economy by GDP. How come it affects all of our lives every time the oil price moves? And I think when we understand that issue and we have an agenda for developing our markets in an inclusive way that it impacts every Nigerian, then we begin to solve the issues. I think foreign capital is absolutely important, but today, the foreign capital only buys the sovereign. And the foreign capital has failed to discipline the sovereign because quite frankly, the sovereign is not behaving like a very, not, not, I mean, you know, not, not a problem created by the people responsible for it today. The sovereign historically has not behaved responsibly and foreign capital continues to support it. So we then have to focus on how do we develop firstly the base of other pools of savings in this market and the buy side and that domestic market then becomes the largest buyer and the largest financier. Local capital markets development is fundamental for development, is a fundamental pillar. 
it's a key aspect of how we drive development across the globe. So there's no question, I think, in our minds about how important it is to develop the local capital markets, ensuring that we're able to raise local currency to finance in the long term infrastructure, housing, et cetera. So critical. And the developed markets have showed us this already. So we know it's not anecdotal. It's, it's factual. We have a lot of evidence to demonstrate that. But I think also I think it's important to keep in mind, and both of you have actually just made this point, that um, we're, we're in a bit of a, of a vicious cycle um, here in Nigeria. So I think you kind of presented um, debt capital markets as in some ways a silver bullet to kind of solve some of the problems um, that we have here. And I would agree that it's an important part of it. But we are in a bit of a vicious cycle. The reason why we don't have more developed uh, debt capital markets here, we haven't seen the type of progress that we would have expected given the fact that we did start this journey so long ago is for the reasons that you that you've just suggested fundamentally there are uh, structural problems with the economy um, around inflation lack of diversification um, again lack of infrastructure investment all of these things that ultimately um, are, are part of the reason why you don't have on the other side a more sophistication in in the debt capital market so so it's a vicious cycle if we had much more, and again, I would, I would argue that diversification in the economy is the silver bullet. If there is one, I think that is it. Diversification, not in GDP, because we already have it, but diversification in export earnings and in government revenues. To me, that's the linchpin. So this is the vicious cycle that we're in. But again, I do think that the, the capital markets, debt capital markets in particular, have an extraordinary role to play. Pension funds are intergenerational investors. So if you were buying bonds about five years ago, um, inflation rate was just under 10%. Uh, bonds with a yield of 13%, 12% looks good. Today, inflation is about 16%. So suddenly those bonds, because they are long-term bonds, are you know, negative. I mean, it's not because the pension funds don't have the skills to buy bonds. It's simply because the macro policies are what they are. So if today bonds are 16% looks high, if tomorrow inflation rate gets to 20%, it becomes a problem. That's the first point. Second point is pension funds don't originate or create instruments. Um, they invest in the basket of instruments that exist in the universe subject to PENCOM guidelines. And therefore, it's left for the capital market to create those instruments. Um, what really guides the investment of pension funds? First of all, the returns has to be above inflation. Um, it's, it's almost impossible for pension funds to invest at below competitive market rates, so we don't give subsidies. Um, pension funds having long-term liquidity also doesn't equate to them ability to take uh, very high levels of risk. So I think the uh, setting up infra credit is a step in the right direction because essentially what it does is to separate the risk from ability to invest long-term. Well, those are some of the highlights from the uh, FMDQ OTC Securities Exchange annual conference this week. Well, let's look at what we've got next week on our calendar, and that's uh, the Nigerian Stock Exchange coming up with its data or workshop. I believe that's for Wednesday, and that will be the 3rd of October. And with that, we come to a, con a, a, it's a wrap on the program this evening. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Temple Ashadju. Of course, I'll see you next time.